Focus Active is the car you buy if you like the idea of a mid-sized SUV but can't quite bring yourself to buy one. In this lifestyle orientated Focus, you get a higher ride height and a bit of fashionable bling, but you don't have to join the crossover crowd to get it. In fact, there are hardly any compromises to make in buying this trendy Focus derivative. And of course, you get all the design improvements that Ford has painstakingly built into the current version of this design. Here's a Ford Focus with a bit of SUV attitude. Does the model give you everything you really need from this kind of car and nothing you don't? Or is it merely an irrelevant piece of lifestyle marketing? We're going to find out. The rise and rise of the SUV market shows no sign of slowing down. But not everyone's convinced by the idea of the crossover class of car. Do you really need something with Jeep-like styling to complete the school run or commute through the suburbs to work? Probably not. It's difficult, though, not to be attracted by the idea of a model that sits you a little higher than the traffic around you and one that looks as if it might occasionally venture from the beaten track. The concept of delivering this for customers who don't want to make a complete switch to a fully-fledged SUV is what's driven Ford to create its range of active KA+, Fiesta and Focus variants. And it's the Focus that you might think would have the widest appeal. It's the only active model that's family-sized and the only one to be offered in two body styles, hatch and this estate. But why would you choose either version of this car over a proper mid-sized SUV, like, say, Ford's own Cougar? A fair question, to which the Blue Oval brand has lots of logical answers. A Focus Active is less expensive to buy, more fuel efficient, nicer to drive and easier to manoeuvre. Yet, thanks to a 30mm increase in ride height over a standard Focus and some useful extra trail-related driving modes, you still get most of the low traction capability of a typical lifestyle SUV. Not that typical owners are ever likely to use this slippery surface prowess very much. No, this is a car that'll fit in just that little bit better in the country car park where you walk the dogs. Or for older buyers, it'll be a compact family hatch or estate that'll be just a touch easier to get out of in the doctor's surgery car park, thanks to that fractionally increased ride height. In other words, a lot of it's really about customer perception. And anyway, the fact that differences over an ordinary focus are relatively small is in many ways a very good thing. After all, there's lots about an ordinary focus that's brilliant, including drive dynamics, which we're hoping won't have been harmed by the active package. Ford insists we needn't worry on that score and reckons this active derivative will account for a significant proportion of focus sales going forward. Should that prove to be the case, that'll make this contender a very significant model indeed, given that the Focus is Britain's second best-selling car. Let's put this variant to the test. In the days before volume car makers simply had to build a purpose-designed SUV, some of them produced crossover versions of their ordinary family hatchbacks and super minis, slavered up with plastic panels and lifestyle marketing, but with no mechanical changes whatsoever. Which meant, of course, that such models were as useless as a fish on a bicycle when faced with a slippery trail. Your first impressions here might be that this Focus Active is cut from similar cloth, but actually, that's not quite true. We're not going to pretend that it's in any way a capable off-roader, because it obviously isn't. But Ford has at least made some effort to give this car most of the low traction prowess that likely buyers might need, and rather pleasingly, done so while actually improving the drive dynamics on normal tarmac. We'll start with that because it's probably most relevant to what you'll experience with this car most of the time. One of the things that irritated us when we drove the standard version of this Mark IV Focus was Ford's penny-pinching decision to downgrade the volume 1-litre petrol and 1.5-litre diesel hatch variants, the ones that the vast majority of customers choose, to a cheap torsion bar rear suspension package, rather than the proper supple multi-link setup fitted further up the range. 
Korean rivals standardise this kind of more advanced damping setup on all similarly sized models, as by the way did Ford when the first generation Focus was originally launched back in the 90s. There aren't many areas where modern automotive engineering has gone backwards, but this is one of them. But not in the case of this Focus Active. The need to absorb the kind of sharper undulations an owner might experience on, say, a forest trail meant that for this variant, that proper multi-link rear suspension was essential with all derivatives, even the more feebly powered ones. And in any case, it was needed for the unique springs, dampers, stabiliser bars and front and rear knuckle geometries that Ford wanted to fit to this Active derivative. It all means that over the poorly surfaced tarmac you might find in town or on the school run, a 1.0-litre petrol or 1.5-litre diesel Focus Active will feel significantly nicer to ride in than any other Focus hatch derivative equipped with these two engines. And you'll find this to be even more true when traversing the speed humps and road calming obstacles that now infest our urban environments. Ford calls this independent rear suspension configuration its SLA or short long arm setup and equips it with multi compound bushes that feature different stiffness characteristics when stressed in different directions for better isolation of smaller bumps and improved reduction of vibration and harshness. In this case, this package has been paired with a slight increase in ride height, 30mm at the front and 34mm at the rear, so that owners can get to their favourite woodland camping or hiking spot without getting nervous about rocks puncturing the sump or rain stranding them in a muddy car park. A few other things will also help in this regard. First, the decision to equip all active variants with more durable, high-profile tyres. And second, the inclusion across the range of a couple of extra off-piste orientated settings for the car's selectable drive modes system. Slippery mode is intended for surfaces like mud, snow and ice, delivering a softer throttle response and tweaking the ESC and traction control systems to reduce straight ahead wheel spin, particularly when pulling away from rest. In contrast, the alternative trail mode reconfigures the ABS and traction control to actually slightly increase the normal level of wheel spin you might get, the idea being to clear sand, snow or mud from the tyres and so help to maintain momentum on softer surfaces. Otherwise, apart from the extra bodywork protection and the standard inclusion of roof rails to help carry bicycles or sport equipment, a Focus Active is just the same as any other Focus, though you don't get quite as wide a range of engines to choose from. Those 1.0-litre petrol or 1.5-litre EcoBlue diesel engines we were referencing earlier come only in their highest output forms, which means 125 PS in the 1.0-litre EcoBoost model and a reasonable turn of speed thanks to the overboost function that comes with the engine in this state of tune. This gives you an extra 30 PS for easier overtaking and makes 62 miles an hour attainable in 10.0 seconds on the way to 124 miles an hour. In press on give and take motoring, the Focus can really shine with this engine, recently improved with cylinder deactivation for greater efficiency. Get the EcoBoost power plant singing and it's hard to believe you're working with just 999 cc's under the bonnet. The alternative lower capacity engine option, the 1.5 litre EcoBlue diesel, is offered in 120 PS form for active model buyers and uses low inertia turbocharging to try and make it more responsive and quieter than previous grumbly old Ford diesel units. To be frank, it's still a bit rumbly, but if you're not amongst those with a pathological objection to black pump fuel, you might well like the way that this unit produces nearly double the mid-range pulling power that the 1 litre petrol power plant can manage. 62 miles an hour from rest in the 1.5 EcoBlue version occupies 10.0 seconds en route to 122 miles an hour.
If you want something a bit more powerful, then your salesperson will direct you towards the two perkier power plants that Ford offers to focus active buyers. Those preferring to fuel from the green pump will favour the 1.5-litre EcoBoost petrol unit borrowed from that Fiesta ST hot hatch. It puts out 150 PS, makes 62 miles an hour in 8.8 seconds en route to 130, and thanks to further use of cylinder deactivation, you don't have to throw away your efficiency priorities to choose it. Alternatively, if you'll be covering longer distances in this car, you'll probably be better off with the engine we're trying here, the 150 PS version of Ford's Echo Blue diesel unit. Lifestylers may well also be attracted by the towing benefits delivered by this unit's useful 370 newton meter torque output, which provides for the ability to tow a brake trailer as heavy as 1.8 tons in weight. Whatever engine you choose beneath the bonnet, your dealer will give you the option of mating it with the slick shifting 8-speed auto gearbox we're trying here, one of those which adapts to your driving style. This transmission has been programmed to work with the selectable drive mode system we mentioned earlier, a feature that all Focus models get as standard. This borrows the kind of technology we've long seen on premium badge models in this segment, using normal, sport and eco settings to alter steering feel, throttle response and, on auto variants, gear shift timings to suit the way you want to drive. And if you want to drive with a degree of dynamism, you may not need us to tell you that in the family hatchback segment, there's nothing still quite like a Focus. Thankfully, the active specification changes have had very little effect on that class-leading prowess. The driving position, the feedback through the wheel, and in particular, the way the car responds as you throw it into a corner, all these things continue to set this car apart in its sector and are further aided by a very effective torque vectoring system that helps to get power down through the bends. There's still nothing else in this class that feels quite the same. Get out of one of these and then go and drive a rival Astra or a Golf. We think you'll find that it'll feel a little dull by comparison. With all this talk of sportiness, though, it's easy to overlook the reality that most motoring writers seem to ignore. Namely, that the majority of Focus customers don't really place any serious dynamic demands on this car at all. These people will probably be more interested in the news that this fourth-generation model's stiffer C2 chassis and sleeker bodywork have combined to slightly improve cruising refinement. They might, though, approvingly consider the fact that a clever electric brake booster significantly improves this car's stopping distance. They could like the idea of an optional adaptive cruise control setup that can take over driving duties on the highway, and there's more than a possibility of interest in the improved active park assist system that can take over steering, throttle and braking duties when automatically manoeuvring you into either parallel or perpendicular spaces. In short, whatever your driving priorities, this Focus aims to have something compelling to offer which is probably why so many people will like it. And we think even more buyers will when the car's specified in this active form. If, like us, you wish that Ford had been a touch more adventurous about the styling of this fourth generation Focus model, you'll probably be far more approving of the car in this slightly more extrovert active guys. In the car park, along the high street and on the school run, it'll stand out far more distinctly, particularly if you specify yours with the brightest of the two unique body colours, Orange Glow. Here, as you can see, we've got the estate version. You might alternatively prefer the five-door hatch body style. Either way, it's clear at a glance that this car has a more active role in life. 
The key change, a 30 millimetre increase in ride height, is most obvious in profile, where you'll also notice the black painted finish for the roof and the black roof rails. This silver lower sill moulding flows between black plastic clad wheel arches, housing rims with black highlights, wheels that are either 17 inch or, as in this case, 18 inches in size. The estate model has a much longer glass house than the hatch, but shares the way that the second part of this model's mid-level crease has been designed to accent the rear haunches. There's also an overt lower crease that flows from the front wheel arch to give the flanks some shape. There are plenty of bespoke styling features at the front too. The grille's unique, mesh patterned with a dark surround, and the bumper's distinctively styled for this model, as are the silver LED fog lamp surrounds. Plus, of course, no self-respecting SUV-style car can do without a plastic-fashioned, and therefore practically useless, uh, lower silver skid plate. Just above sit headlamps that can feature full LED technology and adapt themselves to the road ahead and other motorists. They're placed as far into the corners of the car as possible to maximise the vehicle's width and stance, flowing up into a long flowing bonnet featuring twin creases on either side. At the rear, there's another unique bumper above another silvered lower skid plate, which curves around the twin tailpipes that are standard on all active models, no matter how humbly powered. And you get this neat roof spoiler with a shark fin style radio antenna just beyond. As usual, though, what's more important is the stuff you can't see, namely the light, stiff and strong C2 structure that lies beneath the curvy panel work and which has been designed to underpin a whole new generation of similarly sized Ford models, including the Mark III model Cougar SUV. Time to take a seat up front. And you'll find that the design changes made to differentiate this model from its standard stable mates on the inside have been somewhat more half-hearted than the alterations made to the exterior. In fact, in the standard Active model, the only differences lie in Active branded scuff plates and the pale blue seat stitching. Plusher Active X variants like this one get a little more. The blue stitching is extended to the floor mats and to these soft console knee pads. And you get unique door and instrument panel inserts. All of which, to be frank, are easier to notice than the effect on the driving position of the 30 millimeters of extra ride height. Otherwise, it's all pretty much as it would be in an ordinary mid to high spec Focus derivative. Ford has priced this variant identically to its ST line models, but active buyers get a higher level of standard infotainment with two features included that you'd have to pay extra for on standard versions of that sporty model. One is the 4.2 inch colour display, your view through the leather stitched three spoke wheel. This monitor featuring audio, phone, trip computer, digital speedo, driver assist and navigation settings. The other is the larger 8 inch version of the Sync 3 infotainment screen that sprouts from the top of the dash and is supplied in all active variants, complete with navigation. As usual with Ford's Sync systems, you get Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Along with logical menus and the proper rotary volume and zoom controls that some rival systems have unwisely dispensed with. If you're not familiar with the Sync package, it doesn't take long to adjust to it, with the central dash monitor divided into sectors that allow you to activate audio, phone and sat-nav functions via touchscreen icons. Heating and ventilation is, thankfully, covered off by separate switchgear further down the centre stack, which is just as well since the display icons on the monitor can be a little fiddly to use, despite the inclusion of smartphone-style pinch and swipe functionality. Instead of stabbing away at the screen graphics, it's better to try and master the system's impressive voice-activated functionality that allows you to issue simple one-shot commands. Simply by saying phrases like, I need a coffee, I need petrol, or I need to park, you can easily locate nearby cafes, petrol stations, or car parks, and find destinations like train stations, airports, and hotels. 
This plusher Active X model also includes a standard, a clever Ford Pass Connect package that offers live traffic updates and Wi-Fi connectivity via a built-in modem. It's an option worth having on the lesser version. Ford hopes you'll find the ambience of this fourth generation Focus model more inviting. To that end, the dashboard has been pulled forward and there's a slim, quite low set center console. Plus the redesigned body shell has freed up more room for shoulders and knees. As a result, the cabin has a surprisingly spacious feel. Something probably helped by this Mark IV Focus design's massive 50% reduction in button clutter. Quality's taken a decent step forward too, with smart metallic highlights and soft touch materials covering most of the higher surface areas, while hard, scratchier panels are generally banished to lower areas you'll rarely touch. Flock-lined storage areas, this smart concertina ring storage tray lid between the seats, an electronic handbrake and this neat circular auto gearbox controller also aim to push this cabin up market a bit. Despite all of Ford's efforts, though, you still wouldn't quite think you were in a Volkswagen Group product. It's just a few little touches that make the difference. Would you get fake door stitching or a centre console box fashioned from a cheap plastic moulding in a Golf? We think not. What else? Well, the ergonomics are difficult to fault. Throughout Focus model history, Ford's always tried hard to ensure that it's a car that can be comfortably driven by almost anyone of any size. True to form, this version feels right from the moment you get behind the wheel. Thanks to near perfect driver positioning and supportive bolstering on a driver's seat that on this top variant gets part leather trim and six way electric adjustment. It positions you perfectly in front of an instrument binnacle that's clear and concise enough to make unnecessary the optional head-up display we're trying here. Frontward visibility is aided by thin A-pillars and properly placed pedals. And rearward vision's pretty uncluttered too, which is just as well because parking sensors cost extra on the standard model. Most owners will option them in as part of a convenience pack, which also includes a rear wide view camera and an active park assist system that'll steer you into tight spaces. The more we've lived with this car, the more we've appreciated the little touches that Ford has thought so much about with this fourth generation Focus design. The optional B and O Play 10 speaker audio system we're trying here is a great addition to the range, but less obvious things have also contributed much to our enjoyment of this model. For example, all Focus Active variants include important features that you'd probably have to pay extra for on rival cars in this segment. Things like driver's seat lumbar adjustment and a quick clear heated windscreen for frosty mornings. You also get an electronic handbrake, not our favourite modern era automotive development, but one that does undeniably free up a useful amount of extra cabin stowage space between the seats. In this area, there's a coin tray behind the handbrake switch and forward of that are a couple of cup holders. While we're talking cabin storage, we'll tell you that the door pockets are a touch on the small side, but you do get an overhead compartment for your sunglasses, a further cubby by the driver's right knee and a storage area at the base of the centre stack that includes USB and 12 volt ports, plus an optional wireless phone charging mat. The lidded storage bin between the seats we referred to earlier includes a lift out tray, a pen clip and a USB port. Illuminated vanity mirrors are built into both sun visors as are ticket clips. You get a reasonably sized glove box too, though unfortunately this area can't be cooled. Let's try the rear seat. And one of the most important things about this fourth generation Focus is the way that its longer C2 platform has so much improved space in the back. 
The space on offer here certainly doesn't redefine what the family hatchback segment can offer, but it does at least now typify it. In a Focus, backseat folk are these days now much treated as they would be in a rival Golf, thanks to more room for knees, legs and shoulders. Plus, there's decent foot space beneath the front seats. We've appreciated the improvement in rear sideward visibility too, achieved thanks to a repositioning of the C-pillar. We also approve of this low centre transmission tunnel, though a centre-seated adult will still be as relatively uncomfortable on longer trips as he or she would normally be in such a position in a car of this class. What else? Well, you get decently sized rear door pockets, outer ISOFIX child seat attachments, netted seat back storage areas and a center 12 volt port, though a USB point would arguably be more useful. The larger expanse of side window glass makes this part of the cabin feel airier too, something further emphasized on this plusher Active X variant by the inclusion of a large panoramic glass roof, though this feature does reduce the otherwise very acceptable headroom levels by a few inches. Let's finish by taking a look in the cargo area. Pausing on the way in pulling out these wide opening doors to notice these neat optional door edge protectors that pop out to prevent car park dings. And the easy fuel filler neck designed as usual on Ford cars to make it impossible for you to inadvertently put diesel into a petrol model or vice versa. Here we've got the optional hands-free tailgate fitted, one of those that can rise with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper. If key in pocket, you're approaching the car laden down with bags. Now, in a typical estate variant fitted with the usual mini spare wheel, it rises to reveal 575 litres of space if you load to the level of the tonneau cover or 728 litres if you load to the roof. That's quite a big increase on the figures you'd get in a Focus hatch. 341 litres loaded to the parcel shelf and 443 litres loaded to the roof. The extra 43 millimetres of roof height added to this generation Focus estate model was incorporated with an eye to allowing owners to comfortably accommodate a standard sized dog crate if need be. Whatever body style you choose, you'll find that this area is practically sized and accessed via a low-ish loading lip. There are the usual couple of bag hooks and, as expected, four tie-down points. This simple pull strap release pulls up the boot floor, beneath which there's space to store the tonneau cover when not in use. And normally on a Focus Estate, there'd be an adjustable height boot floor. It's optional on the hatch model. However, you can't have that if you've specified either a full-size spare wheel or the B&O audio system. Should you go for that desirable stereo package as we have here, you'll find that its subwoofer takes up most of the space beneath the cargo area base, hence a reduction in boot capacity. There's 34 litres less of it in a B&O Spectre state like this one. Plusher Focus models like the Vignale variants have a ski hatch for the easier carriage of longer items, but the Focus Active designers have missed a trick here by not including it with either body style. So you'll be a bit stuck if you don't have roof cross rails and want to try and emulate the brochure pictures by carrying your surfboard to a deserted sandy Cornish cove. Nor is there the option of a 40-20-40 rear seatback split that would also help you in that regard. If you need more room and want to push forward the 60-40 split rear bench, then if you load to the roof, between 1,576 and 1,620 litres of space can be freed up in this estate model, depending on whether you specified that B and O system. For the equivalent hatch version, the figures would vary between 1,250 and 1,320 litres. Ford expects the Active variant to account for up to 10% of all Focus sales. Pricing for this lifestyle orientated model sits in the 22 to £30,000 bracket, with this SUV style derivative having been priced exactly comparably to the sporty ST line variants in the standard lineup. As usual with a Focus, there are two body styles, a five-door hatch, or for a model-for-model -model premium of £1,100, the more versatile estate option we have here. 
In fact, Ford reckons that the majority of the focused estate models it sells going forward will be active spec ones like this. For an extra £1,450, the 8-speed automatic gearbox we've been trying for this test is available across the range. Take-up on this self-shifter is likely to be quite significant on the mainstream engines offered with the standard active trim that the majority of buyers will choose. There are three. The base 1.5-litre EcoBlue 120 PS diesel power plant. The entry-level 1.0-litre EcoBoost 125 PS petrol unit or the mid-range 1.5-litre EcoBoost 150 PS petrol option. If you're prepared to find an extra £2,500 to get yourself the plusher Active X spec we're trying here, then your portfolio of available engines widens to include this particular car's top 2-litre EcoBlue diesel with 150 PS that'll better suit those likely to tow or undertake longer trips in this Ford. There are quite a number of reasons why you might choose this Focus Active over the brand's proper mid-sized SUV, the Cougar. This estate version has much more luggage space for a start. But perhaps the most significant one is that this Focus derivative can be a lot more affordable. The premium over an Active to a base spec Cougar is probably around a couple of thousand pounds. But if you want a Cougar trimmed to a comparable level as this car, the difference would rise to close to £5,000, which is a significant amount at this price point. In fact, you could have a Focus Active for about the same money as you'd pay for a comparably powered and spec version of the brand's much smaller EcoSport SUV. As for comparable models from other brands, well, there are almost none or perhaps an infinite number, depending on your perspective. No other volume brand family hatch can be had with SUV style packaging in five door hatch form. If you switch your attention to estates, it's true that Skoda does a Scout version of its Octavia and Volkswagen does an all track version of its Golf. But both come only with four wheel drive and quite powerful engines, so must be costed from well over £27,000. Taking both models away away from this Focus Active's usual price point. Broadly, the same comments apply to premium hatch models with SUV pretensions like the Volvo V40 Cross Country and the Infiniti QX30. Of course, if you're prepared to expand your browsing remit to include purpose-designed SUVs, then you'll get yourself a vast choice of options in the £22,000 to £30,000 bracket. For true size comparability to this Focus, you'll need a mid-size rather than a super mini-based SUV. So, in other words, something Cougar-shaped rather than Echo Sport-sized. If you're looking at the standard active spec Focus models, smaller mid-sized SUVs like, say, Nissan's Qashqai or Seat's Etika will be price comparable. If you're browsing amongst the Active X variants, then slightly bigger, more direct Cougar rivals will be available to you at a similar price. Cars like Volkswagen's Tiguan or Mazda's CX-5. For most people considering this car, though, the whole reason they'll be considering this Focus variant in the first place will be because they won't want a purpose-designed SUV. If that's your perspective and you've reached the understandable conclusion that there's nothing quite like this Ford that will better suit your needs, then the deal might well be clinched by the pretty generous level of spec that the Blue Oval brand includes as standard with this derivative. For a start, you get a number of items that would cost you significantly more with an identically priced Focus ST line hatch or estate model. Things like the Sync 3 Center Dash touchscreen with navigation, a 4.2 inch instrument binnacle color display and rear privacy glass. 
Let's get more specific about the kit tally on offer here, focusing on the standard active level of spec that most will want. You're buying into a fairly unique look and feel here, of course, courtesy of the raised ride height, front and rear skid plates, special side rocker mouldings, twin exhaust pipes and bespoke styling treatment for the bumpers and the upper and lower front grills. And other key standard aesthetic additions like 17-inch foundry black five-spoke alloy wheels, plus roof rails and further black finishing for the roof and the mirror caps. Active spec also includes LED front fog lamps with a cornering function, a keyless start button, blue stitched upholstery, active branded door scuff plates and two extra additions to the usual focus, selectable drive mode system, slippery and trail settings. All of this is in addition to more usual equipment features you'd expect to find on a Focus variant of this price. Things like auto headlamps, a Thatcham Category 1 alarm and a mini spare wheel rather than one of those irritating tyre repair kits. Inside you get manual air conditioning, leather for the steering wheel, driver's seat lumbar adjustment and a useful quick clear heated windscreen. The estate version gets a dual height load floor in the boot too, plus the SYNC 3 infotainment technology we mentioned earlier includes a DAB tuner and Bluetooth with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring and works via a floating 8-inch colour screen mounted on top of the dash. Plus, you get the usual neat Ford-specific touches, things like the easy fuel system that stops you pumping in the wrong kind of fuel, and the Ford MyKey system that enables you to program various parameters into a spare ignition key so that if you loan your car out, say to your son or daughter, you can restrict the speed at which they drive and even the stereo volume they choose. MyKey can even disable the car altogether if driver and passengers are not using safety belts. It can also prevent the driver from deactivating safety technologies like stability control. And talking of safety technology, all variants come complete with an extensive roster of camera-driven safety kit, which we'll get to in a moment. We'd think hard before paying the significant amount Ford wants for the top ActiveX variants. Though the smart partial leather upholstery trim, the blue stitching for the floor mats and the soft console knee pads, and the unique door and instrument panel trimming inserts you get at this level in the range certainly add more of an upmarket feel. Active X variants can be identified by their larger 18-inch wheels in this smart 5x2 spoke absolute black design and their body-coloured mirrors which are power folding and come with puddle lights. A large glass panorama roof is a key inclusion at this level, though it does mean you have to do without roof rails on the hatch version. Other X-Spec features include front and rear parking sensors, auto wipers and keyless entry. While inside, you can expect to find heated front seats, dual-zone electronic air temperature control, a six-way power-adjustable driver's seat, an auto-dimming rear-view mirror, height and lumbar adjustment for the front passenger seat, and the clever Ford Pass Connect package that gives you onboard Wi-Fi and live traffic information. Enough on standard spec. Let's say that you've decided on the focus active trim level you want. Are there some key options that you'll need to set aside some extra budget for? Well, quite possibly, yes. Bear in mind that with the exception of parking sensors and the Ford Pass Connect package, most of the extra features fitted to plusher X-Spec can't be ordered as options on a standard spec focus active model. It's also probably worth knowing that some of the most desirable items on the option list, things like a head-up display, a heated steering wheel and the hands-free powered tailgate on the estate, can only be had on the plusher ActiveX variant. That also applies to the optional full LED front headlamps that can be had either with or without an adaptive front lighting system that continuously adapts the beams to road conditions and other traffic. Most buyers right across the Focus Active range opt to find the extra £500 that Ford wants for its convenience pack. 
This gives you a rear wide view camera, door edge protectors, an active park assist system that'll steer you into tight spaces. And if your focus doesn't already have them, all round parking sensors. For the same sort of extra cost, another popular addition is the B&O audio system we've been trying here with its 360 degree sound, digital sound processor and 10 speaker, 675 watt output. If you go for that though, you won't be able to have the adjustable height second load floor that's standard on the estate and optional on the hatch. Bear in mind that you're probably going to need to pay your dealer extra for your chosen paint colour. Solid Race Red is the only shade that comes as standard. There are various premium and exclusive metallic bodywork shades to select from, two of which are unique to the Active and Active X models, Orange Glow and, as here, Metropolis White. What else? Well, you might want to consider an optional wireless charging pad for your phone, which can, on request, be combined with an ACV QI protective charging case for Apple iPhones. Practical options for the cargo area include a boot liner, a reversible load compartment mat, and a load retention net. You could also specify a rear bumper protector to guard against scratches when you're sliding heavy stuff in and out. If you're activity orientated, you might want to look at a bike pack carrier that goes with the crossbars you can specify for the roof. Plus, there are the usual tow bars, roof boxes, wind deflectors, mud flaps and carpet mats. Plus, towers will want to add in the trailer coupling, which includes trailer stability assist to stop trailer sway or the trailer coupling pre-equipment electrical kit package. OK, enough with the general spec. Let's move on to take a look at this car's safety provision and decide whether there's any substance to Ford's claim that this car leads its class in this regard. Potentially, this Focus can be fitted out with three radars, two cameras and a 12 ultrasonic sensors as part of a package of Ford Copilot 360 technologies to enhance protection, driving and parking. Perhaps the most significant item here is the autonomous emergency braking setup. Ford calls its system pre-collision assist with pedestrian detection. As usual with these kinds of setups, this one works as you drive to scan the road ahead for potential collision hazards with a particular focus on pedestrians. It even works at night. If something you might be about to hit is detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Should you still manage to have a collision, a post-collision braking system automatically applies the brakes to try to help avoid the car spinning off to hit something else. There's also a lane keeping alert system that warns you if you veer out of lane and a lane keeping aid that will automatically steer you gently back to where you should be. And Ford provides an intelligent speed assist speed limiter to help you keep safe and legal through urban areas. In addition, the SYNC 3 infotainment package includes an emergency assist feature that will automatically alert the emergency services if the airbags go off in an accident. What else? Well, as you'd expect in this day and age, all models include ESP stability control, traction control and an ABS braking system with EBA or emergency brake assist for panic stops. There are also the usual twin front side and curtain airbags. Take all of these many and varied safety features into account and you'll not be surprised to hear that this fourth generation Focus design achieved a full house five star overall safety rating from Euro NCAP who specifically gave it a very creditable 85% rating for adult occupant protection and an 87% rating for child occupant protection. If you still want to go further, as an extra option on most models, it's also possible to order a blind spot information system with cross traffic alert setup. This works on the move to warn you if you're about to pull out to overtake when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. And it also warns you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a parking space. Go for this package on a standard active model and you'll get power folding mirrors too. 
We'd also recommend that you take a look at the optional driver assistance pack we've been trying here, where the key feature is an adaptive cruise control setup, which not only automatically keeps you a safe distance from the car in front on the highway, but on auto models also includes lane centering assist that'll subtly apply steering correction to keep you in the center of your lane. This is about the closest this focus can get to autonomous driving tech. That driver assistance pack also includes various other camera-driven features. Driver alert, which monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness. Evasive steering assist, which helps drivers steer around stopped or slower vehicles to help avoid collisions. Auto high beam, which automatically dips your headlights at night in the face of oncoming traffic. And traffic sign recognition, which reads speed signs, displaying them on the dash as you pass. That speed sign information can then combine with navigation data so that the intelligent speed assist speed limiter we mentioned earlier can be programmed to automatically set itself whenever you enter a speed limited zone, not allowing you to exceed the legal figure. That way, you should never get a speeding ticket ever again, in theory anyway. Don't you just love technology? Another of the reasons you might want a Focus Active rather than a conventional mid-sized SUV is found in terms of the need for lower running costs. With this Active model, the fuel figures and CO2 readings are almost the same as they would be for any other upper-spec Focus derivative. Which, to save you crunching the numbers, means that in comparison to a typical mid-sized SUV like Ford's Cougar, the fuel result, a comparably engine Focus Active will manage, will be about 10% better, and the CO2 reading will be about 25% better. When you add up the tax and running cost implications of that, it could be pretty significant. Anyway, let's get to the figures which for fuel economy have been measured according to the latest stricter WLTP or World Harmonized Light Vehicle Test Procedure ratings cycle. These readings are the same whether you choose your Focus Active with a hatch or an estate body style. The emission stats we're going to quote here have been converted back to the older New European Driving Cycle or NEDC2 spec since that's what a lot of rival models are still using. We'll quote these based on the most popular hatch body shape with the 17-inch wheels you get with standard active trim. There's only a fractional downside if you opt for an estate. Or this plusher Active X specification with larger 18-inch wheels. Or, as in this case, both. The 1-litre EcoBoost petrol unit that most will choose manages up to 49.6 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 107 grams per kilometre of CO2, or 42.8 mpg and 126 grams per kilometre of CO2 as an automatic. For the 1.5-litre EcoBoost petrol engine, the figures are up to 46.3 mpg and 121 grams per kilometre of CO2, or up to 40.9 mpg and up to 133 grams per kilometre as an auto. What about the diesels? Well, for the 1.5 EcoBlue unit, you're looking at up to 62.8 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 93 grams per kilometre of CO2, or up to 54.3 mpg and up to 110 grams per kilometre as an auto. For completion, we'll also give you the figures for the 2-litre EcoBlue diesel variant we're trying here, which only comes with Active X spec, up to 57.6 mpg and 115 grams per kilometre as a manual, or up to 51.4 mpg and up to 117 grams per kilometre as an auto. These are very class competitive figures and a major factor in achieving them has been the important enhancements in engine technology that Ford's introduced into this fourth generation Focus design. A key development has been the introduction of cylinder deactivation technology on the three-cylinder, one-litre petrol power plant that many Focus Active buyers will probably choose. You might be familiar with this sort of thing from larger engines, but if you're not, we'll tell you that at less than 50% throttle and between 1,500 and 4,500 RPM, one cylinder is shut off, improving fuel consumption, so Ford says, by as much as 6%. 
The system can disengage or re-engage the cylinder in question, the middle one, in just 14 milliseconds, 20 times faster than the blink of an eye. And the transition either way is so seamless you won't feel or hear it. We couldn't anyway. Added to that are the efficiency benefits that come with design improvements like sleeker bodywork, a best-in-class 0.25 CD drag factor, air curtain technology to reduce turbulence around the wheels, a new C2 platform that on its own saves 88 kilos of weight, and an engine start-stop system. Whatever focus derivative you decide upon, it's reasonable to wonder whether these quoted returns are really achievable in real-world everyday motoring. We raise this issue because some have doubted this point, and it's certainly true that the 1 litre T EcoBoost power plant requires a more efficiency orientated driving approach if you're to get close to the running costs returns it's supposed to be able to achieve. Fortunately, Ford's technology aids you here. The standard drive mode system includes an eco setting which adjusts the throttle and engine settings to give the best economy possible. Also helping is an active grille shutter which sees slats in the front grille remaining closed at startup so the power plant can more quickly warm up to its optimum operating temperature. On the move, the flaps can open or shut for optimum aerodynamic efficiency. What else? Well, we'll tell you about servicing, which on all engines is required every two years or 18,000 miles, whichever comes first. Two prepaid servicing plans are available, one that costs £340 and covers you for two years and two services, and another that costs £550, is transferable to future owners and covers three years and three services. Maintenance bookings can be done online through the My Ford portal. This is part of the Ford Blue Service Scheme that wraps up all of the care and maintenance of your car into one bundle that includes a free 30-point e-check of vital parts and highlights any work required with a red, amber and green traffic light warning to rank items that need attention in order of importance. There's also the Ford Service app that you can download to your phone for free. It lets you locate your nearest dealer and make a booking, plus has a couple of extra elements allowing you to find petrol stations and including a Park Me feature that remembers where you left your focus so you won't have to hunt for it, say in a busy multi-storey car park. As for the warranty, well, like all Fords, this one comes with a 36-month, 60,000-mile package that also includes one year of Europe-wide breakdown assistance. On top of that, there's an anti-corrosion guarantee for 12 years. Ford also offers the chance to extend this cover to either four years and 80,000 miles or five years and 100,000 miles. Onto insurance, where ratings vary only with engine size, so they're the same regardless of whether you choose a hatch or an estate, active or active X trim. If you're wanting a model powered by the 1 litre EcoBoost petrol unit, you're looking at Group 13E or Group 16E for the 1.5 EcoBoost petrol power plant. For the 1.5 litre EcoBlue diesel, it's Group 14E or Group 18E if you go for this 2 litre EcoBlue diesel. These ratings are hardly any different to those of other Focus variants. And finally, let's consider the question of residual values. Industry experts CAP reckon that an active or active X spec Focus derivative will hold on to more of its value than any other Focus derivative. Over three years and 60,000 miles, ordinary Focus bottles retain between 35.1 and 36.5% of original value in this period, which isn't bad against an industry average of 33.2%. But a Focus Active will manage 37.1% and a Focus Active X 37.6%. We started this test assuming that a Focus Active would only really appeal to someone who liked the idea of an SUV but didn't want all the compromise involved in owning one. We've ended it though thinking that this variant might equally well appeal to a buyer simply wanting a better, more complete Focus. 
After all, with this lifestyle orientated model, you get most of the main equipment items you'll want already included. And if, as is likely, you're looking at the volume 1 litre petrol and 1.5 litre diesel engines, you'll find that an active hatch variant will ride much better than the standard model thanks to the way its rear suspension has been upgraded to sophisticated multi link status. But will this model also gain conquest sales from people who started out wanting a fully-fledged SUV as Ford hopes? Well, possibly. The sort of money that would buy you only a small super mini-based SUV here gets you a larger, more spacious car that still makes something of the same kind of lifestyle statement. OK, so you don't get four-wheel drive, but then hardly any small or mid-sized SUV provides that either. The same could be said of a requirement for a raised driving position, though this car's 30mm ride height increase does provide a little of what you might look for in that regard. Overall, it depends what you want. And if what you really want is a Focus, this is one that'll make more of a statement on the school run and give you a bit of extra peace of mind the next time a snowy or icy snap strikes, thanks to the extra traction afforded by its slippery and trail driving modes. It's a more fashionable take on Britain's best-selling family hatch, and quite a significant group of buyers will think that to be a very good thing indeed.